Welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Join T2 and guests as they discuss all things personal and professional development. The T2 Hubcast, brought to you by the People Performance People. So welcome to the T2 Hubcast with me, Martin Johnson. And me, Spencer Locker. Spence. Martin. This is definitely not our second take. No, no, not by any stretch of the imagination <laughs> did we stop the previous one and start it again. Oh dear, how are you doing, mate? All right, how are you? Good. Good. We're finally Good. in one place at the same time. And yeah. And we get to, get to come in here and sit down. Now, to set the scene, um, I don't know what the topic for this podcast cast is. Usually we at least agree a loose topic before we come in uh, and we've maybe got a minute to think about it i just said spence let's go with it i'll roll with whatever you want to discuss on this <laughs> podcast so i might be slightly nervous in 20 seconds or i might be absolutely happy with it what what are we discussing spence right so um off the back of uh, off, off the back of a little bit of research i've been doing recently um i won't go into what it is because i don't want our competitors going oh that's a good idea we'll do that um, but it's, it's it's around about the sort of subject of emotional intelligence. Yeah. And uh, and and you know what? When when we start engaging our clients, when we're in a room with our people, particularly that day one, yeah, that learning about yourself or leading yourself rather, and and sort of making sense of what you know about yourself and above the waterline behaviour and below the waterline behaviour and things like that. <clears throat> we do talk that. I mean, we we have the. I'm, I'm assuming you do similar to me, where we have these we have these honesty exercises in the room. So it might just be random times. It'd be like uh, when it's when it's appropriate, obviously. But it's like who thinks that today they are exactly the same as they were five years ago? And I can say quite confidently that every time I've asked that, the vast majority of people say no. Um, we've had a couple of people say yes, uh, right? Okay, fair enough. If that's how you want to, uh, that's how you want to see it. That's that's fine. Um, but it was like, right? Okay, so if you are you exactly the same as you were five years ago? No, but five years ago you were being your authentic self, weren't you? Yeah. And today you're being your authentic self. Yeah. So what's changed? And this is, uh, and I think this is the thing is is the is the consideration of evolution and authenticity. Yeah, I, it is. And I think, so my first thoughts on that, listening to you opening up there was um, nobody, so my view on that would be nobody is ever completely stagnant. I, I, I think with every passing day and every week and every life experience and every interaction and every learning, every piece of knowledge you glean, every mistake you make, I think there's an there's a constant evolving version of you with the caveat of because we know this from from the work we do is that there's a there's a certain sort of if you look at a person there's a certain DNA to them in terms of you know not their physical DNA but their personality type <clears throat> their view of the world their value system their unconscious motivators whatever it might be and and that is pretty deep seated, and that does define a person. It stays with them as they go through time and as they travel through time. But everything else on the periphery is a constant evolution. It either regresses or it progresses, if that makes sense. So I absolutely get why. I think if someone asked me the question and said, "Are you the same now as you was two years ago, or five years ago, or ten years ago?" the answer would probably be no. Because you're not exactly the same. You're never stagnant. You have a, a, a value system. You have a, a core identity to yourself with some deep-seated traits and beliefs and styles. And you have your genetic coding, which makes you who you are, right? But you're a constant, I think, evolution of a version of that. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I totally, I, I sort of get it. I do. I mean... <clears throat> the one of the reasons why I'm, I'm sort of I, I was I was looking into this and I was sort of chucking it about was um, the, this this question of authenticity um, and this consideration or, or I suppose a thought process that there's a version of you out there that's possibly a little bit more authentic uh, than the way you are now 
and what's standing in between you and that. It's like that that constant thing that that thing that's just be beyond your beyond your right. grasp. It is the thing. It is the thing because you're onto something here, Spence. You, you're you're. I'm enjoying it already. You're provoking me, <laughs> right? That word authenticity is misunderstood because some people would believe that to be authentic, you can never change. You have to be exactly who you are, who you set out to be and who you once was all the time. And any deviation from that or any change from that would be deemed as inauthentic, which is utter bollocks. It's utter rubbish. And having lived this firsthand myself, right, because if you look at my journey, when I grew up, I grew up on a council estate in Hull. I'm still friends with my friends from that council estate today, from my school friends. I, you know, I'm still very much the person who has grown up in Hull, in a working class environment. Um, and I carry through today a lot of the beliefs and traits and the qualities that that has instilled in me and some of the things that doesn't really serve me well, right? However, along the way, I joined the military and the military, military taught me a lot of things, discipline, a lot of, you know, things around working as a team, you know, all, all of the stuff for a boisterous young man wasn't maybe my first priority at the time. And then I went into the world of work and I rose the ranks in business. And then I got this deep seated desire to start my own business and the rest is it. But uh, along that way, I used to see people and people would go, Hey mate, you're doing all right for yourself, aren't you? With this T2 stuff. But I've got to admit, I watch your talks on YouTube and it's not the Martin Johnson I knew. I've had that said to me. Oh, right. So, the last time I saw you, mate, it was 20 years ago. Do you expect me to be the same Martin Johnson that you knew 20 years ago? Because I've gone through 20 years of careers and experiences and learnings and my 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 vision has changed. My priorities have changed. So I'm, I've got some of the core qualities that I once had, but they've evolved along the way. Does that mean I'm not authentic now? Absolutely not. Because authenticity is this, Spence, and this is what I'm getting at. Authenticity in somebody is based on who you are at that time against what you truly believe is the right thing to do for yourself, for the people around you, and for whatever it is you're trying to achieve, whatever endeavor you are on. And that can evolve and change over time. And just because somebody all of a sudden has a bit of drive in them and they want to better themselves doesn't mean they're not authentic. Just because someone was once a drug addict and now they're a Christian and they go to church every week, doesn't mean that that's not authentic. You could say, oh, it's all a load of rubbish. They're just masking over who they really are. But are they? Because if something's happened in their life that's triggered a positive difference or has taken them in a different path, as long as that's what they truly feel and they're doing it not just for personal gain, but for, for mutual benefit, for both their own well-being and happiness, but then the benefit and happiness of others, that's authentic. Does that make sense? It does. But I think people generally view that any modification or change in someone's personality type, priorities, or the way they externalize themselves isn't authentic anymore because it's not the person I knew or it's not the experience I had. Do you know what I mean? I do. I do. Just as you were talking there, there was there was a there was something that you said. You didn't mention it when you when you got, got on into when you got your legs, you didn't mention it. But initially, you did mention it, um, which which I think I think could be sort of <clears throat> explored a bit more mistakes. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I've got a I've got a sneaking suspicion, and again, I don't want to. It's not a broad brush. It's not a casting casting everybody under the same light or anything like that. But there's a tendency for people to to not grow and not develop. If they don't acknowledge the mistakes they make, there's one. There's one. Um, there's one statement that some people believe gives them the ultimate authenticity, and when they make it, I feel sorry for them. And that statement is, "Well, I am who I am. What you see is what you get." <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember? I, I I don't know whether I'm sure you were around. Where the bloke did the um the um oh what do they call it is it MBTI with the fiery red and the cool blue and the mellow yellow and the 
the, the insights. Insights, yeah, yeah. And that bloke's wandering around going, sorry, love, I'm a fiery red. That's yeah. the way I am. And I thought, you just do not get the point of this. But these people wear it like a badge of honour. Yeah. It's like, um, the, I am this... The, so when somebody... If you think about this, right, when a human being says, I am this person, when they decide, I am this person, completely, end to end, and I'll never change, I am who I am. In a nutshell, you've single-handedly cut off any potential opportunity to grow and develop and learn. And that's not how human beings have evolved over millions of years. Can you imagine if we went back a million years ago and the caveman foraging the earth went, well, I am who I am. I live in a cave, I hunt, I sleep, and I repeat every single day. We wouldn't be here today, right? Mm. We, 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 we thrive in life and we progress in life through going, I am who I am at this moment in time because that's where I've come from and this is where I've arrived at. But does that mean, what, who am I, what am I going to look like in 10 years' time? Who could I be? And, and, I, and I'll come back to this. You can't ever completely transform and erase, erase some of the fundamentals of who you are. Because as we know in psychology, 60% of it, up to 60% is genetic coding. So you operate in a certain way. You have a certain predisposition to traits and characteristics and behaviors from genetics. And I think 40% or around 40, 45%, depending on the psychologist you and the neuroscience that you 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 quote, um, is, is nurture. So what you've learned along the way, what you pick up through parenting and friends and your, 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 your social circles, et cetera, and education. So given that up to 40% of you is continuously evolving, you never just are who you are. Does this make sense? It does. It makes, it makes perfect sense. But the, six, but the 55, 60% of you that you've inherited through <clears throat> your biochemistry... Hmm they're going to stay around with you forever because your yeah. genes are your genes. So you're going to have a certain certain side to you, a certain DNA in you that is like, I'm I'm always going to be extroverted, driven, um, loud, you know, mm. all of these things. You know, I'm always going to be that because I think that's part of my genetic coding. Mm. But I can learn to be more reserved. More reflective, but would that be you being authentic or well, not? If if it served, if it ended up serving me and others well, yeah, yes, absolutely. If it was the right thing to do, right, okay. Because I know there's certain times where I've got to learn to listen more. I've mm. got to learn to be more patient. That's not me being inauthentic. No, no. You know, if if all of a sudden I learn to be patient in an endeavor, I learn to be patient with somebody, with mm. slow moving progress, right. Mm. And that actually serves me well and helps others around me. You can't look at me and go, that's not authentic because the Martin Johnson I know is impatient as hell and he's, <laughs> and he's irritable. Yeah. I want you to kick off. You know, <laughs> you, you, you can't say that that's yeah. not authentic because maybe yeah. I, over time I've gone, no, because that's the right thing to do. Mm. And that actually is going to help me and my family and my kids and my wife and my friends and whoever it is, that's going to help us. Mm be better together to have better experiences and to enjoy life and be happy more. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think authenticity is a reflection of a person's mode of operation at that time, mm. based on where they've come from, based on their, their, their DNA of who they are with the genetics and everything else, but based on what, uh, what they believe is the right thing to do at that time. And that might not be a reflection on what you would maybe have done 10 years ago, five years ago. And why, and, and why do you think that is? Cause, cause just linking back to, as I was saying earlier on mistakes, the mistakes you make taking ownership and accountability of those mistakes. Uh, and I, cause I, this, this, uh, uh, for me, from my perspective, I've learned more from rock bottom than mountaintops have ever taught me. Mm. Um, the mistakes I've made, the, the misjudgments I've made. The, the, and don't get me wrong, this has not been a catalogue of errors for the last fifty-three years. But you, you can you can go back and you might if you if you're truly honest with yourself, if you're re, if you're reflecting over your period of 
well, 40 years for you. I 40 mean, years obviously, for me. yeah, yeah, just a bit but more for you. <laughs> but but it's that it's that that authenticity where where you can actually sit down and go, you know what? I'm so glad I made that mistake. Absolutely. But but we're assuming here that we're talking about everybody improves for the greater good over time. It's not the case. No. Some of us. Some of us get worse as we get older. Some of us decline in our proper behaviours and our attitudes. Some of us become bloody irritated and frustrated the older we get, less patient. Um, some of us go through... But even still, at that time, let's say you was once in your teens and 20s, you was a model student, you was a great prospect, you was a fantastic husband or wife, you was a great family member, life was great, you was pleasant, you was, you know... And then all of a sudden in your 30s, you take a dip, you know, whether it's addiction, whether it's your attitude changes, whether something changes in your life where now all of a sudden you start falling out with family members, you start, you know, doing things in your life that maybe it, it, it's not a reflection of what you once was. And people are looking at you going, what's happened to this person? This person, the person I remember was 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 these types of qualities. Well, that person in the moment, even though people are not looking upon it fondly or even though it's not serving them well, it's still their authentic self in that moment in time hmm. because that's where they've travelled to. That's where they are. Does that, does that make sense? Oh, very much so, so. So authentic self is where you are at any given moment, <clears throat> for the good, the bad or the ugly, um, it will not look entirely like it looked 5, 10, 15 years ago, nor should it. And it probably then won't look like it will look in 5, 10, 15 years from now. Because I'm telling you now, Spence, you listen to this podcast mm. when you're 80. You listen to this podcast when you're 80 and listen to yourself and what we're saying and what yeah. we're talking. And you will be a different person then to you are oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very much so. Very much. I mean, to be honest with You'll you. You're probably looking down on yourself going... Stop talking bollocks, Spence. <laughs> what you want? Because you'll be past it by then, you know. It'll be like, yeah. Or you'll be some Buddha, you know, some <laughs> wise old, you know, Buddha guru who's who's going. Ah, you was ahead of your time there, Spence. So, but the point being is, it's evolving. Yeah. And people make the mistake. I'll say it again. Hmm. They think authentic self is someone is who they are, hmm. and they don't change from it. They don't change from the value system. They don't change the behaviours. They don't change the way they communicate, what they stand for, the way they deal with situations. When you say it like that, that's incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. So yeah. fixed-minded, it's untrue. Yeah. yeah. And do you know anybody? I mean, as you said, you've you you've still in contact with a lot of people that you knew, um, uh, and some people. It might be that it might be that some of these people that you knew you're in close contact with, and it might be that you just see other people around, but. Um, at 40 years old, do you see anybody and they're doing exactly the same as they were 20 years ago? No, nobody does because your priorities change. You get more tolerant, less tolerant. Some people are like life and soul of the party in the early years, aren't they? And they're well known in social circles. Like if that person's out on a night out, I'm out because they're larger than life. And then all of a sudden they have kids and get married yeah. and, and, and have a career and grow tired and can't be bothered with people anymore and don't want to go out on a Saturday. And they get, oh, you've changed. Yeah, I bloody have. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have. Yeah. I have changed because that, that doesn't appeal to me anymore. This is now my authentic self, not the party animal you knew, right? Some people go in the opposite direction. They don't, they're never a party animal. They don't go out. They do all the studies. They hold down a job. They do the things. They have the kids and the wife the wife or the husband and then later life they want to go and let loose because mm. they've been you know and that's now their authentic self so i think it's a really interesting topic that you started because i think there's a misconception about authenticity and quite often the people who call people not authentic are the ones who are stagnant because they have this 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 belief system that you are who you are and you shouldn't ever change and for me, change is good. Evolution is good. Seeing what you're capable is good. Learning is good. Modifying what you prioritize is good. Um, and therefore, your authentic self will be what it is at that moment in time based on where you've come from and what you truly believe today. And as long as it's for the... if it, Authentic for me means you're doing it for the right reasons because you believe it. Mm. 
and because it serves both you and others well. Or sometimes it just serves you well. That's authentic. You don't always have to... I know we like to think altruism is mm. the ultimate thing where we, we we serve others and you do things for others. But let's be honest, right? Mm. Sometimes it's just about looking after yourself. Yeah. And if you not being a party animal is looking after yourself, then do it for yourself. Yeah. You know, if you... Um, want to start a business and broaden your horizons and you better yourself and leave the estate, do it for yourself mm. and for your family. You don't have to explain it to anybody. And there's millions of examples of that. Yeah. I mean, I've, uh, I've, um, I've noticed a lot on social media uh, in this area um, where um, uh, people who shall remain nameless, but you'll know who it is, um, have been on a journey from humble, humble backgrounds and humble beginnings and from my observation, that journey was uh, initially to to evolve, to 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 reach their own potential for um, those reasons. Um, but since they reached that potential, and ever since then, that seems to have been turned on its head to be more altruistic than self serving. Yeah, there is an interesting thing. I think. When it comes to authenticity, there's a really interesting dynamic going on at the minute with social media and the fact that in the modern day, you live your life through social media. A lot of people do. Um, it's incredibly visible to others. And I think there's a huge amount of skepticism being generated by the the validity of people doing certain things that could be deemed as altruistic, but then they're filming it and putting it on social media. <laughs> yeah. So this is where a big question of authenticity yeah. comes up, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Right. If you're going to give a homeless person a sandwich, just do it. Yeah. Don't video it and put it on Facebook. Yeah. If you're going to donate a thousand pounds to charity, do it. Don't put it on Facebook. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're raising money for charities or you're doing altruistic things and you're trying to raise, pro, uh, you know, awareness, yeah, yeah. awareness is a wonderful That's thing. That's what I was aiming for then, more then than get, anything Then else. do it. But there's there's a lot of people questioning authenticity of people's <clears throat> actions mm. because we live in a world now where we've got to capture everything and promote it to the world. Yeah. Whereas there's some people who are subtly doing it in the background and they do and, and then that's deemed as more authentic, right? Yeah. I mean, as you know, here at T2, we, I donate a lot of money to charity every mm. year, but I don't put it, I don't put who and what mm. on, on social media. Yeah. That's not wrong or right. It's just my preferred mode, mode of operation. Yeah. But I know what you mean. There's a, there's a real challenge in, in, in authenticity in, in the modern day, because years ago, what you saw is what you get when you interact with somebody mm. periodically. Whereas now we've got an insight into everybody's mm. actions and lives on a daily basis. Well, if it if it was hundred percent true, yes. But as you know, um, people don't put the worst moments of their lives up there. They usually put the the the, the very best through rose tinted glasses. Oh, this is my life. Um, so it's that top five percent of the life, and other people will see that and potentially compare their lives to that. And either use it as a, you know what, an aspirational thing. I want to be like that, or my life's crap. Yeah, <laughs> and and you know, it's interesting in what we do, isn't it? At T two, and we work with clients, and we give talks. You, you know, you, I'm always really conscious of the fact that um, I've got to incorporate a bit of self deprecation and a bit of honesty into what I f fall short on. Because you can't stand up there all the time and say, this is how you need to be a better leader and this is how you run organizations and this is how you create success. One of the things that I'm proud of is that what enables me to do that with some level of credibility is that I run a successful organization. Mm. I'm not a one person band who's going out on talks and yeah. but I've never <laughs> done it myself, right? Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. we're living proof that we're creating success and we're mm. creating a successful, fast growing organization that people want to be part of, right? Mm. But but the thing for me is I'm constantly, more than the good stuff, I'm constantly standing up like you do in classrooms and saying, right, I'm terrible at this and this is what I'm really bad at and I still haven't mastered this. I always say like one of the hardest things for me is parenting. If, if there was one area that I go, am I getting it right? It's parenting. Mm. Sometimes I challenge myself, I question myself so much like, you know, am I dealing with this correctly? Am I too harsh? Am I not harsh enough? Am I am I dealing with boundaries correctly? Am I am I mentoring them for the future? Am I preparing them for the future? We've talked about it offline, yeah, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. And um, because that's that's generally we're all we're all flawed in in many ways. 
and we're all we all like we know with the psychology we all have emotions and we all have a brain which triggers off counterproductive behaviors and that makes us at times impatient and angry and frustrated and anxious and all of these wonderful things so i think authenticity you've to your point there spence is it's about evolving for the greater good and mm. looking at how you can be better but it's also just acknowledging at times that we're all shit at plenty of stuff yeah all of us yeah yeah even the most successful or the deemed most successful people on the planet and i suppose if you appreciate that and and, and recognize that that's going to feed your evolution because you haven't reached the pinnacle if you think you're perfect if you think that there's nothing out there to learn if you feel that your opinion is right and everybody else is wrong, then you're not going to grow because there's nothing to grow into because you feel that you've hit that pinnacle. Well, yeah, exactly. And, you know, no one's perfect. I mean, mm. I'm sure you could hold someone up like the Dalai Lama and say, well, he might be pretty close to it, but I'm telling you now, I bet he couldn't do a Sambuca and sing Pussycat. <laughs> you know what? I've heard, it, I've heard it, he's a bit of a badass. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Dalai Lama. He gets his freak on on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Imagine taking him to the Vicky Doc Tavern on a weekend for karaoke. Get him invited in. We'll do a podcast and then take him down Vicky Doc Tavern. He'll probably be good at it knowing him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, mate, it's a fascinating topic. And yeah, what does it mean to be authentic? It's definitely not this is you, this is who you are, and it should stay the same for you to be remotely mm. authentic. That's not, that's not what it is. And I think people mistaken that. And it's certainly not deeming anybody who evolves themselves or, or modifies the way they see the world or changes the, that, that's not inauthentic. That's just, I'm for over time and where I am right now, this is the way I operate and what the way I think and what I value. And no one can say that's right or wrong. No, no. That was a fascinating, um, off the cuff topic. That is sense. that half an hour? We're on twenty seven minutes. Got three minutes. minutes left. If you want to impart any little nuggets of wisdom you're before we finish, you're going to get the sambuca out there. Sambuca and what's <laughs> new pussycat on karaoke? That'd be a good podcast. <clears throat> we should do a podcast with sambuca's one. Hey, we got, right. Let's do a let's do a remote podcast from the Vicky Doc Tavern. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll do in a thirty minute podcast. We'll have to do a sambuca every three minutes. Yeah. And see what the last five minutes of that conversation <laughs> sounds like. <laughs> It'll be authentic for sure. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Quality. We'll have to get. We'll have to quality control that one though. We, that, you know, you know me in shorts. Brilliant, <sighs> Spence. Enjoyed that, mate. Good, I did um, as well. Yeah. I'll think of a title for that. What is authenticity? Question mark. <laughs> have you got one? Here's one I made earlier. What Evolution is it? versus authenticity. Oh, I like it. Oh. Present versus potential, whatever. <laughs> we'll we'll, de we'll, we'll decide yeah. it. But thank you very much, Spence. Enjoyed that, mate. Yeah. Cheers, Martin. And Again, we'll be, soon. And, and we'll be back shortly with another T2 Hubcast.